Kevin thought it would be a good idea to start with the bread and butter. The bread and butter are the services that most service providers here sell in abundance and constitute a very significant part of, uh, of your revenue. And um, I certainly will not spend a lot of time in these two slides, but as a healthy reminder that uh, carrier ethernet today in terms of what the MEF has brought to the industry are definitions for subscriber services and they're listed here and then you get a, an idea of what they, of their topologies on this slide. And then most importantly, the, um, <clears throat> the operator ethernet services. And uh, there's particular focus, as most of you know, on access E-Line. Uh, Transit E-Line is also uh, starting, to, um, starting to pick up. There's interest in certifi certifying a Transit E-Line services, but the focus is certainly access E-Line because as you know, LSO uh, APIs, the Sonata API, is, is uh, just about wholly focused on access E-Line uh, services. So if you, just to keep things simple, care, uh, the MEF has defined subscriber services and operator services, and the focus uh, today really is on uh, the three subscriber services and access E-Line, the, um, the operator service. Now, <clears throat> the, uh, the MEF certification program, if it were well represented on the top right hand, there would be an MEF 3.0 logo, but um, has gone through three generations. So the first generation was actually called MEF 9, MEF 14. Uh, that it was then re-baptized re as CE 1.0, and it was a modest beginning to the certifications that you saw about 120 service providers globally have been certified uh, in the program, including all of them. But this is the start, and it was an E-Line, an E-LAN, uh, and then with uh, Carrier Ethernet 2.0, it grew to include E-Tree and E-Access and more, more substantially uh, defined uh, uh, E-Line and E-LAN services. Now, now we're getting into MEF 3.0. Um, <clears throat> there is a substantial redefinition of Access E-Line, Transit E-Line, um, and of course, there's LSO now involved, and LSO is now included in the MEF certification program. And to begin with, in a pilot that, that was launched on September the 15th uh, that, is, uh, that is ongoing, um, and Isabel will be sharing you much more details about, about the pilot. Um, the, the other bullets in this slide, I, there are other slides that I'll be able to illustrate uh, um, more, more substantially, but what we brought to MEF 3.0 certification is we took the SDN NFV cookbook and we applied it to testing. And what you end up with is a virtualized test platform. And what you discover is that um, by using the, the power of the cloud, by using cloud native, developing cloud native applications, by using uh, developing virtualized test probes, driving down the price of a 100 gig test port from maybe 50,000 to way under $5,000, just shows you that virtualization brought to the discipline of testing uh, creates a whole new discipline and a new world and a new opportunity to scale a new opportunity to drive down costs very substantially. So um, I'll be illustrating the platform just a little later on. Um, the easiest way that we found to certify MEF 3.0 services from a point of view of the model is to offer an on-demand model. So it is not a subscription model, it is an on-demand model. When a, when a vendor or service provider wishes to certify a product for a vendor or a service for a service provider, they can certify just that product at the time that, or service at the time that they, that, they, um, uh, that they want. The other advantage of developing a virtualized test platform, it's all software. And today, mm, <laughs> a substantial uh, part of what we test is just software. And software, of course, changes just about every day. And so a platform 
uh, able to evolve at the pace at which the software itself is evolving has to be a software platform itself, hence the software-based virtualized test platform, which means that we're now taking certification from the old CE 2.0 model, which is very rigid. We tested, we did the final CE 2.0 certification exactly as we did the first one that we did in 2012. So 2012 to 2018, it was all the same. There was no, it was static, essentially. And now we, we're graduating with MEF 3.0 to a, um, an agile environment and therefore an agile uh, way of certifying. Certification, next topic. Um, so the, the, so there, it's basically based on service definitions. Service definitions are based on other uh, MEF specifications which define attributes and parameters of service that are then mixed and matched uh, so as to come up with the different um, uh, services that we saw at the beginning of the presentation. Um, and then there, there are some extras, and one of the most significant extras is at the top of the screen there um, is the uh, 23, uh, the series of uh, MEF 23 specifications with have to, which have to do with class of service and have to do with, uh, uh, with performance and are a very significant part of the MEF service provider services certifications because they do validate perf the performance levels uh, attained by service providers that have to meet very well-defined uh, service um, uh, performance objectives. And then you'll also see a kind of an outlier, uh, which is the layer two control protocol um, uh, specification now in, in the form of 45.1. So you have services definitions, either for subscriber services or for wholesale services. Uh, then you have the underlying attributes documents for the one and for the other, class of service, and layer two control protocol. All of that is put together into a, what used to be a service, um, a blue, sorry, a 3.0 certification blueprint document. Now it has taken the form of a, a, a test, a MEF 3.0 carrier, Ethan, it's services test requirements document. So you will be pointed in the future preparing for a certification to a test requirements document and no longer a blueprint document. Um, and that test requirements document uh, is, is uh, today for carry and it extremely stable um, and uh, should have its final uh, approval um, shortly for uh, access, um, in particular for access E-Line. So I've more or less said this already, but what we certify when we certify, we look at the functional service attributes and parameters, L2CP, SOM, uh, frame behavior, bandwidth profile tests. They are very extensive. They include the testing of bursty traffic, um, and that is the testing that has required years to develop uh, the, the, the testing algorithms. Um, and to, uh, to implement them properly, and then service performance uh, that, I've, that I've just mentioned. So um, just to give you a ballpark um, uh, indication, um, so uh, an EPL, an, an E-line service will require about five, well, I can tell you exactly the number, 554 test cases. Right now, with this virtualized test platform, they are generate takes about three or four seconds to generate those test cases. Once the system is made aware of the service, the specific service that is to be tested, with its specific VLAN values, specific cost values, specific bandwidth profile settings, and so on and so forth, and then away they go the test. So again, the virtualized uh, test platform is a huge um, time saver. And here is the platform. So let's just talk about the process on the right-hand side. This slide mixes both the platform that I've said quite a bit about already, uh, uh, but also the process. So the process is um, essentially, you know, when you're testing anything, you have to tell the tester what is being tested. 
So in the case of a carrier Ethernet service, the tester needs to know the attributes and the parameters of the service to be tested. And so if you look now on the left-hand side, that's what this portal is all about, the test manager. It allows a service provider to go into a portal and um, to specify uh, the service to be tested. Then the cloud takes over and will generate the test cases in seconds and start executing them. Um, and so the process, in the, and they are executed on test probes, which are software. They're, they're VNFs, they're proper VNFs. They can be in the form of a Docker container or loaded up as a virtual machine on a white box. Um, and, uh, and then the tests are, are then entirely controlled by, by the cloud uh, test engine and uh, displaying the results uh, uh, in the course of the, of the testing itself. Um, there are debug modes available. The point that I want to get to, though, is that with such a platform, the degree of virtualization brings a level of automation to the testing that allows service providers to request the test be run by themselves. So there are no test engineers involved. And this uh, is very liberating for service providers because you really are com in complete control of, of the entire process. So the, the service is described by, specified by the service provider. Um, the tests are, the probes need to be set up. If a service provider already has a, a service populated with white boxes, uh, it becomes a very easy process thanks to Docker containers. Um, otherwise, uh, little x86 servers are, are set up on the, uh, on the endpoints of the service to be tested. Uh, the tests are run. There is troubleshooting and debug mode if, if, if required. And um, uh, at that point, then, the lab biometrics takes over and validates the results that the, that the testing has um, has produced for the service provider when they have all passed, of course, and uh, boom, certified. Uh, you get to appear in the registry, you get to use the, uh, the MEF logo, and you receive um, a service provider's vendors, receive a test, um, we call it a test record, a test report, which is in a, in a protected area of their account so they can have control over the distribution of the test report, for example, to only their customers that request it. And all of this is, is uh, um, uh, protected and, and secured. Um, so it's, a, it's also another way of um, um, realizing a goal of any test process of traceability, right? So anyone seeing the test report is actually taken right to the test report.